Okay, recently off eBay I bought a lot of spare parts for the Palitoy Talking Dalek voice box. Um, you'll see in previous videos where I've taken some of these and got them working again. Um, so quite often you'll get these things bought off eBay or auctions or any other way and they'll be lumped. This bit can sometimes be missing. That piece is often missing. Um, so there's a good selection of spares here. Um, if you start opening them up, you'll see we've got missing diaphragms there. Um, all the mechanism is out of the, these ones. So basically it is at the minute just a lot of old junk. Um, I'm not 100% convinced that that record in there is actually for the Palitoy Talking Dalek for the same way if we look inside this one I'm not sure that record is the right one it looks a little bit short although I could be wrong um, see these are all the same um, bits missing the contacts in the main are good this one here you'll see quite a lot of corrosion on the You'll see quite a lot of corrosion on the contact within there, but they are all still present and a good clean should do that. All the motors look okay um, on the surface, that's the motor housing just there. Um, generally if these are corrupt you can see the beginnings of rust or decay coming through there or on the top axle which is, which is there. So um, we've got a bag full of stylus is there we've got a drive belt um, a spring some pins and some of the finer springs for returning the stylus to its start position and there we've got a couple of diaphragms so at the very least we should be able to get one or two of these working and the one that's particularly knackered will probably just get used for spares so i'm going to take one to pieces one of the best condition boxes, try and reassemble it all together, whack some batteries in and see if indeed it is a Dalek speech record. I suspect it's not, however I'm happy to be proven wrong. Taking the one that's got the best contact, um, taking a screw out, um, this has clearly had a, an attempt with someone previously butchering this because that's not an original screw and it was really bored into the board into the plastic so got it to part popped in some batteries as you'll know to connect the circuit you need to hit these two copper contacts together and as you'll see we've got nothing which suggests that this that this motor seized up um, so impossible to do on the camera but I'm going to nip this together and then hand crank hand crank the motor uh, maybe apply a little bit of contact cleaner to it as well we'll be back taking the time to watch a previous video you saw that i um crank the motors on these things using bog standard wd-40 however um i've since subsequently moved on to this electrical contact cleaner um again made by wd-40 um basically a little jet in this motor housing at the bottom and a little bit on the top um, basically no hand cranking required and it works straight away so um, probably get that moving pump a little bit more in but with this one that's a good connection and so far so good so um, happy with that so far I'll just give it a bit more of a clean um, to really get the efficiency grinding in that and then um, I'll put it together and see what we come out with. Okay again if you haven't seen my previous video I'm just going to pop this thing together um, but I thought it might be beneficial to show you all the loose parts that make up this toy. Um, first thing we've got the record wheel again you've got a fitting on the bottom like an axle um, the critical thing on that is that brass 
brass piece there so when the switch is depressed on the top of the Dalek or whatever the pallet toy talking toy was that basically pushes down and that brass creates the contact um, between those copper pieces which starts the whole mechanism um, there's a stylus um, which is basically just a metal pin um, through a plastic arm this critical spring um, there's one of these in this packet another spring here returns the stylus arm to the starting position that's your diaphragm and that's just a bog standard pin for sticking the um, the stylus into into the actual mechanism again that's your drive belt there as I said in a previous video um, when these have been stood for years you'll see where that rubber has began to degrade and it becomes tear shaped more than an oval so when this has been left stood that's basically been the piece that's been going around that motor axle just there so um, that's it I'm still not convinced this is a Dalek voice box this record just looks too small to me um, but I'm happy to be proven wrong so um, let me get this thing together and we'll see it could be couldn't it but I don't know okay this is now reassembled you'll see I've put the record wheel back on the spring um, on this stylus arm basically the long piece faces outwards the short piece at the front of the spring hooks through a little eyelet in that stylus and the circle spring bit actually has that the shaft of that pin sticking through it to act as a, a um, an axle that's the wrong word but I'm sure you know what I mean so basically when that's finished that presses against the side wall and that needle springs back um, so that's how it should look when it's done in the past when I've bought some of these that are sold as non-working people seem to think an electric current needs to pass through this so it's been twisted into the battery housing um, some of them are just a complete mess um, but there you go you can see the, that brass piece fitting in that metal metal thing I probably need to um, put a top on this and see if indeed it does talk or if indeed it is a Dalek so let's see okay so I've put the top housing back on um, this is going to be a bit tricky with holding a camera but I shall move the stylus needle over the record like so and I'm going to press this button down which should start the motor It's definitely a Dalek voice box, um, which I'm delighted about because I've got two of these things, uh, two Palitoy Daleks that have no voice boxes in. So the fact that there's one that at least that works here for the grand total of seven quid, um, I'm really pleased. So let me put the, f the um, diaphragm and the top piece on and then hopefully we'll be able to hear it in all its former glory. Okay, I've clipped this lid back on now with the plastic diaphragm under. Let's see. How easy was that for the sake of buying a bag of old junk? Um, if I was desperate for one of these, I would probably, I would be happy to pay 10 quid for that. Seven pound for three is a bargain. Um, I'm gonna try and do another. So shall I do a video for it? Probably, let's have a go. Okay, here's the second one. Um, I don't know whether you can see it on this camera because the focus is so bad but there's quite a lot of well there's a little bit of corrosion starting to come through 
on from that battery terminal if I open if I open it underneath um, you'll see there's the beginning of some corrosion especially on one pin the good thing about these is they appear to work with just one battery in um, although the housing is sufficient for two I find that one works perfectly um, which I shall show you now again it's not the easiest when you're doing it with one hand so I'll put, put this one in the place in the housing where you've got the best contact hold that together and again nothing so what we need to do again is get our electrical spray that's the bottom axle of the motor that one is a little bit discolored so um just be mindful of that this might be, you may get some of these with knackered motors i might have been lucky with the first one so let's pop that in there like that I don't even know whether there's any point putting it on the top. But there might be some that goes in. Give it a good shake. See if anything comes in. And nothing. I probably have to crank this to get it to to get it to work. Let's see. There we go. Didn't even need to crank it. Obviously, it needs cleaning and spinning a little bit, but. job is virtually a good one. Again, as you saw from the opening video, um, there was only one drive belt in this set, so I've basically got a rubber band, any old bog standard elastic band, um, and basically used that as the belt to drive the turntable mechanism. Um, it could be a little bit tight, but it feels okay. Um, if it does feel like it's going to get too tight, I could look for a slightly bigger band or stretch this one. Um, but we'll see where it goes. The other problem, of course, is there's no spring in this. So this mechanism um, will never work because the way it works, it needs a spring under there. To almost work as a switch but with that not being there there's no way it will so I need to fashion a spring and the way to do that is by using a pen not a pen by Premier in but um, any spring sp any pen that has a spring mechanism in it you should be able to fashion something to act as the switch spring for this let's have a go okay so i've cracked open the pen um and when you get things like this you'll always see a spring similar to this within it um i basically cut a piece off this spring and fitted it in here which you can see there the tension of the spring um which i suppose you would classify as its springability or softness um is critical to this so um this may or may not work um as you can see it does spring it back up a little bit but whether whether that's going to work along with a dodgy drive belt i'm not sure but as sure as night follows day i'll only be able to do one more of these the other one I just haven't got enough stuff left, so let's try. Again, if we press him down. So you can see it works. Um, I'm going to talk about that spring arm before. You can see here how it comes out of the stylus and round onto that black piece which put the tension on that so it springs like when that finishes and that drops back down see how it springs so it goes it's over like that you press the start button that springs down and then that 
needle engages on that record, moves across, and then that goes up. That's where that spring is critical. But I'm not convinced. I think that's a bit tight, but let's see. Okay, this is all back together now. I've put the diaphragm in. It's all set. It should it, it should work, but So you can see it's sticking, and the reason it's sticking is because that spring I put in I is a little bit too a little bit too tense and springing stuff back up. So basically forcing the stylus onto this diaphragm, which is making it really slow. So rather than mess it up or break it, um, I'm going to shorten the spring. Okay, here we are. I um, continued using some snips and basically shortened the spring. This is obviously a far stiffer spring, so the tension it was forcing up was too great. I also changed the drive belt because the elastic band I had in was just a little bit too big. And when the motor was spinning and the resistance was high with the pressure of that spring forcing it upwards this was just basically the axle was spinning but the the drive belt wasn't so what we've got here there you go you can see that how that now springs up which it wasn't doing which it wasn't doing previously so i've obviously attached the stylus to it um which goes in like that i shall pop that diaphragm on just like so always face down with the dome facing downwards you then get the top gently press him on again it needs to be a good all-round fit like that is moment of truth Here's the first one I did. So that's two that are working. So woohoo! Just gonna. I mean, you can see the, the selection of screws that have been popped in here, none of which are. None of which are ideal, so I need four. I've got three bad ones. Um, I'm probably short of this as well. So, um, however, I have got a magic technique of replacing these. So that goes in the Dalek, and then pop. Lovely, love the toy.